Hi, I'm Ricardo with Almo Solutions, and I'm really excited today to present AgniLink 6, the latest uh, version of our CAD to ERP bidirectional real-time integration system. Today we're going to show how quickly AgniLink can transfer a complete BOM from the CAD application into the ERP application. We're going to use uh, Autodesk Inventor as our CAD application and uh, Dynamics Nav as the ERP system. Notice in this view of the items here that no item uh, exists currently in the ERP system. We're going to create all of the items in the assembly and also all of the uh, bills of materials from scratch uh, using AgniLink. So uh, launching the integration is pretty simple. All you have to do basically is to save your assembly or parts uh, in um, in the CAD application. The first thing a link will do is to automatically resolve discrepancies. Um, and that's based on what we call rules of prevalence that are entirely definable by the customer. And that will determine what is going to happen uh, when a discrepancy is found between a um, CAD data object and the corresponding ERP data object. In this case here, of course, no discrepancies were found um, because there's no data on the ERP system. Um, but we're going to, to correct that uh, quickly uh, by creating our, our BOM. So uh, here, what you see is that, <coughs> excuse me, what you see is that AgniLink makes extensive use of color coding to uh, indicate to the end user what is currently going on with the integration. So, for example, those red cells here indi indicate errors. Um, the green uh, cells indicate data that is currently non-existent in the ERP system, and that will be created automatically, but still is valid and ready for integration. Um, notice also that those columns are grouped with uh, what we call property sets, within property sets, and uh, it's easy to define to which property set each column will be, um, uh, will be attached. Um, notice also that there's an error column here, and by merely approaching Approaching the cell, uh, you can immediately know what errors are uh, have been found. And by errors here, uh, we mean usually data that is required by the ERP system and that has not been populated yet. So in order to allow a quick preparation and validation of the data, AgniLink is equipped with a very powerful set of editing commands that would allow uh, quick populating other data and uh, validation by the same token. Data validation is done in real time in the data grid here. So anytime a data object is modified, it is immediately validated against those legal values in the ERP system whenever uh, it's a lookup fill as this one here. So let's say, for example, I'm trying to enter an invalid value for the uh, costing method, immediately AgniLink will indicate that by coloring the cell red. At any time, I can use the lookup button here to select uh, the proper value among those that are uh, deemed legal by the ERP system. So in this case, it's going to be FIFO. Notice also that in the case of a lookup, uh, you can do a keyword search based on either the code or the description uh, to quickly find uh, what you're looking for. This is especially useful, for example, in the case of raw materials. You can have easily thousands of raw materials available in the lookup. So in order to uh, be, be able to find the proper uh, raw material quickly, um, you can enter a substring here that will return uh, the corresponding values in the lookup here. So notice that uh, those uh, fields here, the, the item type and the units of measure, are basically uh, fields that are required by the ERP system and that have not been populated yet in the CAD document. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a lookup here and say uh, those parts are, for example, finished or manufactured parts. And then I'm going to use the copy and paste feature to quickly populate the rest of the fields here. The same goes for the units of measure. So I'm going to select the proper units of measure. So for example, PCS, 
which is uh, Dynamics Nav's uh, um, way of calling each. And then I'm going to do a copy and paste on all of the other values. Now you can see here that the cells have turned green, indicating that the data has been uh, properly validated against legal values in the ERP system. Notice also that I can use the uh, column chooser here that will allow me to select which, which columns uh, I want to display here in the integration dashboard. Um, also, it's possible to sort based on any key here. Uh, that can be very convenient. For example, if you want to correct errors, you can sort on the uh, on the errors field and then uh, isolate all of these rows that need some uh, correction or, or scrubbing. Uh, basically, by default, the validation of data is done in real time. However, at any time, I can uh, turn off the automatic validation and do whatever I have to do and then manually ask for validation of the data. So now it really says that the data is um, ready for uh, synchronization. Notice that if there's some invalid data in the grid here and I'm trying to complete the synchronization, and then it will say there are errors in your grid, see the red cells, make the corrections, and then uh, go back. So that ensures that whatever ends up in the ERP system has been properly validated against those values that are legal uh, in the ERP system, thus ensuring that whatever ends up uh, and uh, your bills of materials in the ERP system uh, is, uh, is okay. Now all of the data has been properly validated and populated, so all we have left to do is to trigger the synchronization process and look at what is going on with the ERP system. So we can see in real time all of the items are being created and not only are we creating the items specifically, but we are also, by the same token, creating production bombs, like so. Notice here that the quantities we have are the quantities we had in the, uh, a, uh, in the CAD application. I can do a refresh here. I have one top-level assembly, two sub-assemblies. There you go. And we're done. Now let's see what happens if a change is done in the uh, ERP data. So we're going to go back to our items here. And we're going to change the description for that item here. Let's say from a padlock assembly to a, uh, a new model, a heavy duty padlock assembly. Now let's see what happens the next time we update our data. We do a save here on the main assembly. Discrepancies are resolved. Now see what happened here. The rule of prevalence we had in this configuration uh, was defined as um, prevalent from the ERP system. Actually there are uh, four rules of prevalence. One of them is uh, CAD prevalent the other one is ERP prevalent. And we also have two um, rules of prevalence called if empty. Uh, so for example, if uh, the data is not populated in the ERP system, but it is in the CAD system, you can indicate that you want uh, ERP data to be prevalent, except if, it, if it's empty, in which case we're going to use the CAD data. So using those rules of prevalence, we can make sure that we get the most out of uh, data available on either side, uh, on either silo, if you prefer. Now, the end user always has total control over the final result. And this means that at any time, uh, the user can select either any of the three buckets of data that we're working on right now. By merely uh, getting the uh, cursor over the, uh, the cell, you can see what the um, three, uh, the content of the three buckets are. And at any time, the end user can say, okay, I want to use the CAD value instead of the ERP value. And uh, thus uh, reversing the, the effect of the, uh, the rule of uh, prevalence. Um, so, those brown cells here indicate that there was a, a discrepancy found and that uh, it has been resolved automatically. automatically. 
those uh, yellow cells here are just warnings. Uh, what in, this indicates is that there was a discrepancy, but uh, the rule of prevalence forced uh, the uh, the value of uh, of the uh, the field. So I can say, okay, um, the description I want here is really the padlock uh, assembly, uh, and so I'm going to complete the synchronization and go back to my ERP system and see that the description has now been changed, been changed back to padlock assembly. So this is how we can uh, use the bidirectionality of AgniLink to um, make sure that the, uh, the data is updated properly uh, from either side of the, um, uh, of the integration and make sure that we get uh, always uh, optimum results. There's a lot more that can be shown about AgniLink. Uh, we are going to uh, issue new videos over the next uh, few weeks to uh, demonstrate that. Watch, uh, among other things, for the video on the um, AgniLink Configuration Builder, a wonderful tool that allows customers to change the behavior of their mappings and uh, add mappings, remove mappings uh, totally on their own. Thank you very much. I'm Ricardo with Thelmo Solutions.